Good morning. Praise the Lord, everybody. Welcome to Gateway. Everyone standing. We want to worship the Lord this morning. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Let's worship him this morning. Thank you, Lord.
Jesus. Yes, through every storm. No matter what you're going through, no matter the storm. Hallelujah. Somebody needs to hear that this morning. You might be right in the middle of a storm and don't know how you're going to come out of it. But I want you to know today that the winds and the waves still know the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And he is speaking today to his people and speaking into your storm. Peace be still. Hallelujah. Have confidence and trust in that. Oh, Lord, we thank you this morning. We thank you for calming the seas this morning. Oh, yeah, 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 yes. And through the storm, he is Lord, Lord of all. Bless your name. Bless your name. Thank you, Lord. I hope you feel his presence this morning. He's in this room. Hallelujah. And he's with you. Online, wherever you are, God is with you this morning. Right in your living room, right in your kitchen, your bedroom. Wherever you are worshiping God, he is with you this morning. Thank you, Jesus.
you call his name this morning <laughs> somebody ought to call his name Jesus <laughs> the Bible says there's power in the name of Jesus healing in the name of Jesus salvation in the name of Jesus demons tremble when they hear the name of Jesus so somebody ought to say Jesus come on church say Jesus the living word. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You are the living word. And in you, Lord, we live, we move, we have our being. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, you are the living word. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on and put your hands together for the Lord this morning. Praise God. We want to welcome you this morning. Welcome you. Welcome everyone online, our online church. We want to welcome you this morning. And we want you to know that we are so glad, so blessed that you are with us this morning. We want you to know that God has not forgotten you. Even though you're not here, we want you to be here. We'd love for you to be here, but we know that's not always possible. But God is with you. And you are being prayed for. You are being thought of. Your names are going up before the throne. When our church prays, you are a part of this church. And so we want to welcome you. We want you to know that God loves you this morning. Yes, and I want you to know we love you here in the sanctuary. Turn to somebody and say, I love you this morning. Yes, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, my homework today. I got two Bibles this morning, a PowerPoint. Amen. You ready? about to get down. Somebody say, the Lord is in the house. The Lord is in the house. Yes, he is this morning, and the worship is full. Amen? Yes. If you didn't enter in, you, you're missing it right now. Amen? Yes. Praise God. Good to see everybody this morning. Good to see the house of God getting filled up again. Amen? And for you folks at home, we want to welcome you this morning. God bless you. Good to have you online out there. You are the church at home. Amen? The church online, and we appreciate you this morning. We're going to take tithes and offerings this morning. Before we do, I came across a study I did some years back. Actually, I still had the outline for it, praise God. On giving, amen? Somebody say giving. giving. That's important this morning, amen? How many of you know that before the milk and honey, God wants his money? Uh-oh, look out. That's right, before the milk and honey, God wants his money. Hey, before they entered into the promised land, God told them to bring a tithe, pay their tithes. He gave them the law. He laid down things for them to do, Amen? Amen. How many of you want some milk and honey this morning? Amen. Amen. All right, then we need to get, get serious about giving. Amen. Amen. You see, our giving is tied to the word of God. Ma um, in fact, let me share just a scripture from Mark chapter 12. I'm going to turn there very quickly. You don't have to go there. But Mark chapter 12, I'm going to give you some quick verses and uh, put this in your, your index, your Rolodex on why we give. Amen. And why it's important to give. Amen. So Mark chapter 12, I'm, I'm starting at verse 41. Jesus says this, and, he, and Jesus sat opposite the treasury, and beheld how the people cast money into the treasury. And many that were rich cast in much. I love that. Rich folks, you've all got some money this morning? Put in much. Amen. <laughs> and there came a certain poor widow, and she threw in two mites, which make a farthing. And he called to him his disciples and says to them, Verily I say to you that this poor widow has cast more in than all they which have cast into the treasury. For all they did cast in of their abundance, but she did of her want 
did cast in all that she had, even all her living. You see, the Lord was sitting there and he was watching the, the gift, the, give, the giving that was coming in. And I want you to know this morning, the Lord's watching you. Amen. He's watching us pay our tithes this morning. He's watching us do our giving. Amen. He's watching how we, how we help folks out in the streets. How many, how many of you know that when you, when you give somebody a cup of cold water out there, you, you give somebody a hamburger from, from, from you, you know, you stop and get them a sandwich. God's watching all that. He takes all that into inventory. Amen. It all goes into your, 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 your kitty. Amen. And, and in your, your kitty up in heaven, you know, all these treasures are being added up for you. Amen. But, but more so, God wants to give you treasure down here on earth. Everybody say on earth because that's where we're living right now, right? All right. We need, some, we need some treasure down here on earth. Amen. I got bills to pay. Amen. I, I got, I got some, some things. I, I need to put some paint on my house. Amen. There's all kind of stuff needs to happen. So I need God to move in my financial means. Amen. First of all, I want to tell you that giving is out of obedience. We give out of obedience. It's, it's according to the word of God. God's always expected his people to give. Amen. You shouldn't want to come before God with an empty hand, amen? If you've got an empty hand, put something in it. Put yourself in the hand, amen? And say, Lord, I put myself in the offering this morning, amen? amen? Because he wants you to be, first of all, giving proves that we are obedient to the word. It proves that I hear the word and I'm obeying the word, amen? And secondly, the, 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 the giving is tied to the law. It's tied to the word of God. And, and everybody says, well, you know, that's the law. It's the Old Testament. You know what? The law is still relevant today. Jesus said, I came to fulfill the law. I came to complete everything. I am the center of giving right now. Jesus is the reason we give. Amen? I don't give because it's demanded of me in the Old Testament. I give because I love the Lord in the New Testament. Amen? All right. Now, come on. Now, this is all right. We give also because it's holy to give. Amen? Leviticus 27, verse 30 says this, and it says, In all the tithe of the land, whether it be of the seed of the land or of the fruit of the tree, is the Lord's. It is holy. It is the Lord's. It is holy whether it be the seed or it be the fruit, amen? Now, I get some fruit out of my, my, my garden is producing. I've got some, I meant to bring one of those squashes. I had a three-pound squash, three pounds. I had another one was 2.65 pounds. My, my squashes are huge this year. I, I don't know what I'm doing. I, I didn't do anything normal or abnormal with them. I just put the seed in the ground. But the return is so, so fantastic that I'm just like, Lord, we can't eat all these squashes. I'm giving squash to the neighbors. I'm bringing y'all squash. Everybody, you want some squash? I got some squash for you. Amen. But, but, but I'm telling you this, that when you put it in the ground and you sow it with the Lord, he, he produces, he, he returns it back. And it's just that it increases a hundredfold. You see, giving, you know, we sow, we sow. With your, you're, you're putting seed when you give this morning, when you put your tithes, your offerings. We're bringing our, 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 our change offerings. This is our mission Sunday. Amen. And we're remembering our missionaries this morning. And so we collected all that change all last month. And I brought that change. This morning. You put that, that's giving. That's sowing seed. That's, that's important. It goes to the work of God's kingdom. It goes to the work of God's work. Amen. And, and church, that's where God wants us to start at. We can't get anything out of the Lord until we first get our hearts straight about our giving. Amen. So let's bow our hearts this morning. Father, I thank you and I praise you, Lord, for your word. I thank you for the gift of giving. I thank you, Lord, that, that you have put in us a spirit to give, that you've made us all givers this morning. Not just, not just givers, Lord, but cheerful givers. And so we come this morning and we, in, a, in accordance and obedience with the word, Lord, we, we sow our seed, we sow our tithe, we plant in the kingdom right now this, this seed, this, this offering, this gift this morning, Lord. We ask you to take it and to multiply it and to use it for the kingdom. We ask you further, Lord God, that you'll bless the missionaries out there with the offerings this morning that's coming in, that Pastor Song and, and Pastor, Pastor Roy and, and Pastor uh, Price and all the pastors that are out there, that the Philpots that we continue to support, Lord, will be just moved and they'll have their, their needs met, that, Lord, that the, the people that they're feeding will be fed, that everything will be met, every need will be met today, Lord. I praise you for it. Thank you for it this morning. Thank you right now, Lord, that you're touching the, the hands of your people to prosper them in this new week, that you're opening up doors and opportunities, new jobs for people, Lord, this week. Thank you for the, the housing that you're moving people into this week, Lord God. Thank you for the blessings on your people this morning, Lord. Lord, we praise you and we thank you now for this opportunity to sow into the kingdom, and we do so in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen and amen. You can go ahead and bring your offerings. Those that are home, we have uh, online giving, Venmo and PayPal on there. You can give through that. You can also just mail us a check. Uh, we take Visa, MasterCard, American Express, all the above. So praise God. Uh, I think he's putting the Venmo information up there. Amen. amen. All right.
Now, I've, I've said I've already taught one study, so I guess we can go on with another study. Amen. Everybody say, this is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. Today, I will be taught the word of God. I boldly confess my mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I will never be the same. I'm about to receive the incorruptible, indestructible, ever-living seed of the word of God. I will never be the same. Never, never, never. In Jesus' name. God bless you this morning. And we are going to go to Ephesians chapter 5 this morning. Amen. Ephesians chapter 5. And praise God. We've been looking at the river the, the last few weeks. Pastor Todd carried us into the place of healing last week. And it was a fantastic message. Great word for us last week. And, and you know, Pastor Todd, I want to tell you, man, that was a, uh, not just a tremendous message for, for, uh, for the body of Christ here, but for the people online. Because I see online we've gotten uh, so many people have commented back that they've been touched by your word. So I just want to tell you, man, that the Lord is using you and continue to let him use you. Amen. All right, so Ephesians chapter 5, I want to talk to you today because we've been talking about being in the river and staying in the flow of things. And how many of you know that the most important thing we can do this morning is to know who we are, amen, and that we are in Christ Jesus. We are God's people this morning, amen. Everybody that's here that's saved, wave a hand at me, amen. All right, I'm not looking at any unsaved people out here in the audience today. Maybe you're online and you're not saved. I may be looking at you. You're going to get saved today, amen. You're going to get saved today. Praise God. Ephesians chapter 5. I want to look at one verse. We'll start with verse 18. And it's very simple. And it says, and do not be drunk with wine in which is dissipation, but be filled with the spirit. Do not be drunk with wine wherein is dissipation, but be filled with the spirit. You know, I, I do a lot of traveling. Most of you know that. And I've traveled all across the world. I've, I've stayed in some nice places. I mean, I've stayed in some Hiltons and some Hyatts. I stayed, we stayed at the was that when we stayed in Tokyo where they, they filmed the Lost in Translation or something? It was Park Hyatt. And that thing was exquisite. The people working the elevators for you, and, you know, the kids were enjoying themselves, and they were eating all the, the, the room service and everything else. They are just living the life, you know, living the life of Riley, as they say. <laughs> so I remember when I took Lewis to the Conrad in Tokyo one year, and he and I stayed there, and, and they, you know, they, they just gave him carte blanche, you know. Gave him, he was flying first class. So I, I like first class stuff, amen? I like doing things right, amen? I like going places that, that are big, amen? The story, I've I, I taken this story uh, from 2012. The story is told from the, about the Ritz-Carlton, and I love the Ritz-Carlton hotels. They make you feel like royalty every time you go, amen? So, and, and I love to feel like royalty. How many of you know that's all right, amen? I, I, I like being treated right, amen? I, I like being pampered, waited on. I love all that stuff. Come on, y'all. I, I ain't shy about it. Shoot. <laughs> Shoot. Anyway, the story is given about uh, one of their hotels in 2012. A little girl named Ainsley had left her, she had left her Elmo behind. Uh, they were, the parents were on a trip. They were staying at the, at the uh, Ritz-Carlton Resort. And after vacation at the resort, her family had accidentally left behind Elmo, her beloved stuffed animal. And by the time they realized it, they were too far away to go back. So Ainsley was heartbroken, of course. But a quick phone call later, and they were assured that Elmo would be returned. No questions asked. A few, a few days later, Ainsley received a package in the mail. Elmo was carefully packaged in a plush box. Alongside him, she was surprised to find a photo album. And when she opened it, she saw that Elmo was never lost. He had merely uh, had an extended vacation. In fact, the little red guy was pictured at the spa. He was pictured working out at the fitness center. He was pictured lounging at the beach. He was even cooking with the hotel chef. <laughs> News stations got wind of the hospitality, and the story went viral. Was it necessary? No. Most hotels would have sent their condolences and thrown the stuffed animal away. But the Ritz-Carlton is not like most hotels. They pride themselves on serving, uh, serving uh, and, and people coming back, amen? They work harder, stay longer, and sacrifice more, and they are repeatedly ranked among the best hotels in the world. There's a reason for that, amen? They don't get it right every time, but the goal for them has never been perfection, rather upholding a standard of excellence that makes th make their guests feel valued. You know, now I say that because, you know, I, like I said, when I travel, I like to feel appreciated. I like to feel valued when I go in. I like it when people host me and, you know, when you come to my house, I try to, I, I try to make you feel appreciated and valued. When you come in, I'm going to make sure that you have enough food to eat. I want to make sure that you have enough uh, to drink. I'm going to make sure that you're comfortable. I, I, is your seat okay? Is everything? Why? Because I want to be a good host, all right? 
You see, we, we've been invited as God's people to, to host one of the greatest, greatest vessels ever possible. We've been, in, we, we've been given the opportunity to host the most important person in the universe, and his name is the Holy Ghost. His name is Holy Spirit, amen? And, and we've been given the task of hosting him, having him come in and live within me and walk within me and talk within me and go with me everywhere I go. What a wonderful thing thing this is. You know, I, I, Pastor Todd was touching last week and he talked about benefits, some of the benefits we have uh, be, coming into the kingdom. Well, this is the primary benefit that you get right here. This is the number one benefit that we can make use of right here. Matthew 7, 12 through 14 says this. It says, enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction, and there are many who go in by it, because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life, and there are few who find it. Now, listen carefully to what that says. It says, enter by the narrow gate. Jesus said there is a narrow path that you need to walk on to stay in this path of life. Amen? There is a way that seems right unto a man, the end thereof is death, the Bible says. But there's a way that we can walk and and talk and, and be right with God and always be on course. Amen? There's a way that I can always be in check. Amen? You know, I start before, when I started out this week to work on this message, I, I was really, I said, Lord, this is going to be a tough one because anytime you get ready to preach on the Holy Spirit or, the, or, or, or start talking about things of, of the future or things that are important for the king, God's people, the devil's going to come at you. And so all this week, I've been getting hammered right and hammered left and tempted this way and tempted that way. And you could do this and you could do that. And you know what? Each time the Holy Ghost said, come on, go this way. Come on. Buy some ice cream. Get your wife some of that. Get her a set of flowers. See, that's the Holy Spirit. You know, he has everything. Here's the thing. He will direct you if you let him direct you. Amen? There's a way that God wants us to go, and the only way that we're going to go there is by the the way of letting him lead us. Amen? Amen. So I want to talk to you this morning about the Holy Ghost. First of all, who is the Holy Ghost? Who is the Holy Spirit? He's the third part of this trinity. He is the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. He is the, he is the third part. Of, and Jesus talks about him in John 14, verse 16 and 17. He said, I'm going to send you a helper. I'm going to send you another. When I leave here, it's going to be better if I leave because I'm sending another helper to come alongside of you. We call him the paraclete. He's called the paraclete. That, that's a Greek word. It means advocate or helper, one who comes alongside. He's a counselor. You know, so, so who is this Holy Spirit? He, he, he's powerful. When he was there in the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, Remember the Genesis 1, and the Bible says, God says, let us make this, let us. He, he's the us, he's the us that he's talking about. Jesus the Son was there, and Jesus the, 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 the Holy Spirit was there, and he's the third us that was there, amen? He's the us that God's talking about there. 1 Corinthians 2, uh, verse 10 and 12 tells us this, that, 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 that says, but God has revealed them to us uh, through his Spirit. There, there's, a, there's some functions that the Spirit has for us this morning, amen? And this is what it says, is God has revealed them to us through his Spirit, for the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man except the Spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. Now, we have received, listen to this, we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. Who is the Holy Spirit? He's the revealer. He's the one who uncovers all the stuff that God has for us in our lives. Amen. You see, this morning, as, we, as, we, as you're, you're sitting here this morning and as you're think, contemplating what's going to be up ahead next week and everything, the Holy Spirit's already worked it out. He's already got the course set for you. He already knows every challenge that you're going to face, every obstacle that you're going to come in co- contact with, every person that's going to be a negative, every person that's going to try to flip you off, make you mad. He knows everything. All right. Why? Because he is the Holy Spirit. Amen. Holy Spirit. John 16 tells us uh, that the Holy Spirit convicts the world of sin. He also convinces the world of righteousness and judgment. The Holy Spirit restrains uh, the sweeping spread of evil that's in the world today. The only reason why we don't see more chaos in the streets right now, why you don't see people just beating the doors down on every building around here and beating everybody up in the streets, is because of the Holy Ghost. 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 7 tells us that, that he's restraining, that he's restraining the evil that's in this world right now. And so, so when he's taken out, when remember, we're looking for the upper taker, amen? We're looking for the rapture of the church. And when he's taken out, when we're caught up out of here, it's going to be chaos. You think it's mad now. It's going to be real mad, amen? So you better be in the Holy Spirit this morning, amen? You better know, better know what you know, amen? His work is the work of the believer. 
He works in the, in the, in the, in the believer. He's, he's sent for us, amen? He is for you, and he's for me this morning, amen? He is strictly for us. You know, when, when, when we accept Christ, we get the Holy Ghost, amen? He comes in, and he, dwe he, he dwells within us. And, 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 and Paul tells us, he says, don't you know that you're the temple of the Holy Ghost this morning? I've told you this now for three times, three Sundays in a row. So I'm driving that point home. Don't you know that you're the temple of the Holy Spirit? He is in you this morning, amen? And, 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 and everybody look at me now. Wherever you go, he goes. Okay. Wherever you go, he goes. The Holy Spirit regenerates us, Titus tells us. He indwells us. He, he seals us and he guides us, the Bible tells us. You know, he does so much for us. You know, somebody said that Niagara Falls was the greatest unused power in the world. No, he's actually the Holy Spirit. He's the greatest unused power. We don't use him. We don't take him with us. We don't practice the presence of God where we should. And because of that, we're missing out on so much, church. We're getting beat up, put down, whipped up on by the devil. He's beating the living daylights out of some of us out there, amen? And why? Because we've neglected the Holy Ghost. We've, we've, we've neglected hosting the Holy Spirit in our lives. Now, what's the motive for having the, the Holy Spirit? James 4, verse 17 says, Therefore, to him who knows to do good and does not do it, to him it is sin. You see, the Holy Spirit, he guides us into all truth. He keeps us on the right course. You know, and, and, and he'll always remind you, nope, that's not the one you want to do. That's not, the t that's not the truth. Don't tell that lie. You know, the Holy Ghost will tell you that. Amen? But you know what happens is, so many times we ignore the prompting of the Holy Spirit. We ignore, and we keep going, and we keep going. You know, I, it w you know, I could have walked in here this morning from the club, just tore up, drunk down, stinking. <laughs> Y'all to say, "Woo, that pastor boy, he, he's something else, man." Y'all to run me out on a rail. But you know what? You should be more upset about is if I came up here without the Holy Ghost. If I came up here and tried to preach without the power of the Holy Spirit, you see, I don't want to come up here and be full of meat. I don't want to come up here and be full of wine. I want to come up here and be full of the Holy Spirit. You don't need some wine this morning. You need some Holy Spirit this morning, amen? amen. I don't need to go out of here and dr get a drink this morning. I need to have the Holy Spirit carrying me out of here, taking me places next week, amen? I need to know that God's got my, got my, my back, amen, and I'm on course. There's a motive. Why is there no reason for it? Because I want to do what's right, amen? I want to live for Christ, amen? I don't want to just be a Christian and be a, a seat in the church. I want to live. I want to bust the kingdom wide open. I want to do something for God, amen? He gives us the Holy Spirit. He didn't give it for your enjoyment. He gave it for your employment, church. You hear what I'm saying? He didn't give it to you so you could just sit back and go, oh, I got the Holy Ghost. It's so good to have the Holy Ghost. It feels good. But, no, he gave it to us so we can do something with it, Amen? He gave you this Holy Spirit so you can give it back out. Amen. Take him with you wherever you go. Praise God. And that's why when we look at this scripture, look what it says. Verse 18, do not be drunk with wine. You know, what's wine? Wine's the world's way. Why, why is the world's way? You know, if you want to get drunk, what do you got to do? What do you got to drink? What do you got to do to get drunk? You got to drink, right? You got to drink. If you want to stay drunk, what do you got to do? You got to keep drinking, right? Okay, so what does Paul say? He says, be not drunk with wine, wherein is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. So what he's saying is, look, just like you, if you want to be, if you really want to get drunk on life, get some Holy Ghost, amen? Get some Holy Spirit in you this morning. You see, how, how, many, of you, the, the, how many of you felt great in worship? How many of you just said, oh, God is moving in the worship? Hey, you your burns just lift. How many of you are in the Holy Spirit this morning? How many of you are in the Holy Spirit? I'm in the Holy Ghost. You in there? I'm in there this morning. Amen. And see, when we're in the Holy Spirit, you look how much how, how light things are, how beautiful things are, how how how, how there's no you, you're not stressed out sitting up here. You're not worried about your bills right now. You're not sitting up here worried about oh what I'm gonna eat next week and how I'm gonna pay this and no. You sit up here listening to the Holy Ghost speak to you. Amen. And he's speaking words of life, life, life this morning. Amen. You know, it would be useless, useless for me to get up here and try to preach if I don't have some Holy Spirit, if I don't have the Holy Spirit. If I'm not preaching the Holy Spirit message, then the Bible says unless the Lord builds the house, we labor in vain. I, I can put all kind of word on this paper. I can read 
everything in this Bible to you. But if the Holy Ghost is not illuminating, it, it, if he's not opening your understanding to this, it's not going to do a bit of good, amen? So what's my motive? My motive is because I want to please the Lord, amen? I want to please God. I want to live for him, amen? So I want to I I be filled with the Holy Spirit, amen? What's the meaning of, of the Spirit-filled life? That's the, the next point. What does it mean to be filled with the Holy Spirit? The Bible says uh, in Romans 7, 6, where we're able to live by uh, this, this spirit, this thing that we have. You know, Jesus said we receive power when the Holy Ghost comes upon us. He said you receive power in Acts, uh, chapter, uh, Acts 1, verse 8. And, and, you know, and, and that's, that's what we need to understand this morning, the, the meaning of the spiritual life. It means I'm, I'm, I'm empowered. I'm empowered this morning, amen? And, and, and what happens when the Holy Spirit takes, takes control? You know what? I got to get off the throne. When, when, here's what, what somebody said, and I heard this, this said some years back. They said, you know, when, 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 when you're on the throne, Jesus is on the cross. When Jesus is on the throne, then you're on the cross, you know, and that's the key for us this morning. Yeah, I don't want to, I, I want Jesus to get off the cross and be on the throne, amen. I want him to lead me and guide me and teach me and take me, amen. I want him to control me. That, the Holy Spirit is the control center for the Christian life. If we, will, if we will pay attention, he's the best pilot you'll ever have. He will, he will steer you on the right course every time, Sister Tony. We won't even have to worry about making a mistake. I won't have to. I, he'll put a guard over my mouth. I'll, I'll be getting ready to say something. The Holy Ghost says, not today. I'll be ready to do something, and the Holy Spirit will say, and it's just like that. And that's how he wants to live in us. The Bible says in him we live and move and have our being. If we let him come in, he, here, here's the thing. He wants to walk in Lou. He wants to talk through Lou. He wants to live in Lou. He wants to be everything that Lou needs, amen? He wants to fill me up and, and be everything I need. You know, let, let me put a finger in Ephesians for a minute. I wasn't going here, but we're going to go there anyway. Go to Romans chapter 7 for a minute. I want to look at a couple things. I wasn't going to go there, but I am going to go there, Lord, so, since you tell me to go there. So we're going to go to Romans and we're going to chapter 7 first, and I want to look at a couple of verses. Romans, and we start at verse 6, and it says, But now we have been delivered from the law, having died to what we were held by, so that we should serve in the newness of the spirit, not in the oldness of the letter. Paul says, hey, we've been released from the old way of doing things. The Holy Spirit is here now. And, be, and when, Jesus, when Jesus sent the Holy Spirit, he said, this is a new thing here. He's a, this is a new thing. Never before w w did God dwell inside of man. He came on man occasionally in the Old Testament. He empowered man in the Old Testament. But only in the New Testament, only when we see the, the dove coming down from heaven and lighting on Jesus, do we see the Holy Spirit coming inside and, and, and staying on a man. And as a result of that, we too receive that spirit. We receive him the same way. He comes down and rests upon each of us. When you, when you received Christ, he came in and did just like that, just like that. And guess what? Just like the heavens parted and, 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 and the, you, the voice of God said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. The Lord looked down on you and he said, that's my beloved daughter in whom I'm well pleased. That's my beloved daughter in whom I'm well pleased. That's my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. That's exactly what happens when the Holy Ghost comes on you. Because where the Holy Ghost sets, God's well pleased. Amen. And so what does it mean to be filled in this life? Look with me a little further in, in uh, Romans for a minute. In fact, go over to Romans chapter 8. Just turn over to 8 for a minute. I'm going to go there. And, I, and because I was looking at this this morning, I don't want to go back to 7 because Paul talks about the thing he wants to do he can't do and all this. You know, it's, it's all spirit. It's all because he's living a life in the spirit. He's saying, I want to do what's right. He says, and the Holy Spirit is directing me. And if I keep listening to the Holy Spirit, I'll keep doing what's right. But there's a war. And there's always going to be this war. We got a war right now in some of our minds right now. Some of you uh, know what exactly what I'm talking about. You know, things are out there. You know, life, life throws you a bunch of temptations, a lot of tests. You know, there, it's, it's quick. You know, there's a bunch of reasons why you can get mad and get angry and upset at people. There's a bunch of reasons why, why you know, you, 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 just, you, know, you might want to flip somebody. There's all kind of points. But the Holy Ghost is trying to do something different in us, amen? He's trying to bring some fruit out of us, amen? Some, some changes out of us. And so Paul talks about that old self. Uh, uh, look with me over. I, I put a note here about, uh, because I, I got notes here about self being so slippery. You know, because my old nature is, uh, I'm slippery. Aren't you? I can slip in and out of 
bad stuff and good stuff, you know, one day I can be, hey, Pastor Lou, and the next day I can be Devil Lou. Ooh, better watch out. And, and, and you know what? Don't, don't look at me. Y'all the same way. You know, yeah, look, my wife going, I ain't the same way. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know about that. I've seen her on some mean days, y'all. All right. I ain't going to tell you. We'll leave that one alone. All right. Let's move on here. Uh, yes. Uh, all right. So verse 8 in, in Romans 8 says this. So then those who are in the flesh cannot please God, church. We can't please him in the flesh. Amen. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. Look in that. You're not in the flesh anymore. You're in the spirit this morning. Amen. If indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he is not his. You see, I'm not in the flesh anymore. I know I'm attached to this flesh. I know sometimes this flesh wants to rise up, and it depends on what I feed the flesh. We're going to talk about that in a second here. But because that's that's the, gets into the next point about the maintenance of the spirit-filled life. Because if I feed this flesh, guess what? I'm going to be mad. I'm going to be upset. I might flip you off. Sister Deneen going to be mad at me. I'm going to be mad at her. You know, she going to, you know, the, you, you, so Sister Tony, I think, Oh, Pastor Luke kind of grumpy today. No, you know, yeah, yeah, well, you know, that's called the flesh, you know. But, but the spirit, if I feed the spirit, if I, if I promote the spirit, you know, see, because, see, how do I maintain the spirit? First of all, I can't quench the spirit. The Bible talks about quenching the spirit. That means, you know, that's scary because that means you can put the spirit out. You can actually put the spirit out. You can do so much dirt. You can ignore God so much that you can actually, he, sa- he actually says, you're on your own. And God forbid. Now, I, I know it does. It, let me tell you something. If you're convicted by anything that you're doing wrong this morning, you're not you haven't quenched the spirit. Let me just tell you that right now, because because if you've got any kind of conviction and in your heart over anything that you know that you're doing wrong, a lie you told, sin that you're committing, a way that you're living, lifestyle that you're trying to follow. That is the Holy Spirit speaking to you right now, telling you, I'm still here working on you. Amen. You're not you're not quenched. Amen. The other thing we don't want to do is we don't want to grieve the Spirit. Ephesians 4.30 talks about don't grieve the Holy Spirit. And how can I grieve this? Well, I can grieve him very easily. I grieve the Holy Spirit every time I tell a lie. I grieve the Holy Spirit every time I lust after something. I grieve the Holy Spirit every time I, I, I steal something or I, I take something that doesn't belong to me or I say something negative. I grieve the Holy Spirit with my lips so many times. So much negative stuff comes out of my mouth that grieves the Holy Ghost. Bad co- communication. Maybe maybe I didn't. Maybe it's, Maybe I'm not. Uh, uh, testifying on the word of God. I'm not holding on to the promise of God's word. I'm speaking doubt into my life when I should be speaking life into my life. You see, all that's what the Holy Spirit wants to direct us to this morning. He wants to work in us, amen? But, but I can grieve him by, 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 by all these actions. I can put him, I can, I, can, I can make him feel bad. I can be a bad host. I mean, you come to my house, and I, I, what would it be like if I said, you said, well, Pastor Luke, can I use your bathroom? I said, no, you go out there and hit that tree. You can't use my bathroom. You're messing up my toilets in here. You know, shoot. Y'all be looking at me like, man, that t- he's me. I ain't going to his house no more. He's rude. That pastor, boy. But see, that's, the, but, but that's what we do. When, when I get angry with my, my wife and I don't get correct with her you know, quickly, because the Bible says we be angry and sin not. You know, don't let the sun go down in your wrath. You know, we, 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 need to, we can get mad, but, but we don't need to go to bed that way, amen? We, we can get angry, but we don't need to stay angry, amen? And that's God's people. And we, we're going to see that in a minute here because that's part of the fruit. That's part of the benefits from, from what we get from the, the manifestation of the Spirit in our lives. That's how we know if we're, doing, we're full of the Spirit or not. How I treat her. How she treats me. How I treat my kids. How I treat my employer. How I respect them. All these things are tied to the Holy Ghost this morning, church. All right, I'm getting way off the maintenance of the spirit-filled life, the manifestation of the spirit-filled life. That's where we want to go. And I'm almost done here, you know, because uh, we all want to go to heaven, amen? amen. We all want to get there. We, wanna, we, we don't want to just get into heaven. I just want to, we want to bust heaven wide open, amen? We want to come in and go, the gateway team is here. <laughs> Woo, here they come. Bring them souls on in here. Praise God. Praise God, church. Maintenance. How do we maintain this life? How do I live this life with God? And that's, that's where we're at. When he says, don't be drunk with wine, but be filled with the spirit, what he's saying is you've got to continuously pour this thing in. You've got to continuously 
bring this thing to pass in your life. You've got to continuously lift up the Holy Spirit in your, in, your, in your being. Amen. That means you're feeding yourself what? The Word of God. Amen. How do I, how do I build the Spirit? The Word of God. By faith. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God, church. And, 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 and the only way, the only way, and, and, and another way how we build up the Spirit, prayer. Prayer. You know, the Holy Spirit helps you to pray for, th- you, you don't even know sometimes the things you need to pray for, but the Holy Ghost does. And, 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 and you know, here's the thing. I hear a lot of people that, that we don't talk about tongues anymore, but you have a prayer language. God's given you a, that's what tongues are for. It's a prayer language. And, and you shouldn't be afraid of tongues. We shouldn't be afraid to preach about tongues or talk about tongues. Tongues are real. But Paul says tongues aren't the most important thing. He says love is. He said, I speak with tongues more than all of y'all. But he said, but, but, but I'll show you a better way, and it's love. It's a better way. Amen? But tongues are real, and there's a reason you have tongues. And we need to be exercising that gift. Amen? Because when, you don't, when, when you're not praying in your heavenly prayer language, you're, you're not praying the fullness of what God's Spirit has for your life. Because the Spirit gives us groanings and earnings. We don't even know sometimes what we need. I might need some healing. I don't even know it in my body. But God's Holy Spirit does. And he's, mm, he tells me, get on in there and get it. Amen? I might, you know, there might be, there might be a challenge coming up up ahead. I don't even know what's, what's down the road, but the Holy Ghost does. And he's, that's why he gives us those earnings, those groans around in the Bible. That's what Paul talks about in Romans. And that's why it's important why we study the word of God, why we need to know this word, because the Holy Spirit is the word. Amen. He is the word. Amen. He wants to, he wants to come to life in us. Amen. He wants to, to live in us and through us. Now, let me show you three things that are going to, you're going to get as a result uh, of his, uh, his spirit being there, speaking, giving, and submitting. Watch this. Watch this. Look at verse 19. Verse 19, what does it say? Uh, Ephesians, let's go back there. In Romans, go back there. Ephesians, Galatians, turn right. All right, so verse 19 says this. Speaking to one another, listen to that, in hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Speaking, to one another. The Holy Spirit, be not drunk with wine. Remember what he said? But be, we're in his dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. And then he goes on to say, speaking to one another in, 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 look, in, in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. In other words, we ought to be worshiping, amen? The Holy Spirit, listen, the, if, you, if, you're in the, if, you, if you're worshiping, how, how do I know if you're in the Spirit or not? Yeah, are you worshiping the Lord? You know, how many of you know if you're in, in the Spirit or not today? You know, do you worship the Lord? Sister Tony, I know, is in the spirit all the time. She's always worshiping. It always, she's humming in her, and, and Denise says she was humming in her sink, sleep, amen? Worshiping in her sleep. That's how you know that you're full of the Holy Spirit. You know, I, I'd be in manholes. I remember being in manholes, just praising God. Ah, ah, and me, I'm the only guy down there in the middle of the night, streets, dead empty. But I'm down there, hallelujah. I don't know what I sound like, but I sounded good to me, amen? I'm sounding good to Jesus. You, you worship are you worshiping God every place? You know, here's the thing. When I get up in the morning, I, Lord, I just thank you for another day. Even though my back is hurt, my, 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 this is sore, that, I just want to thank you for another day. I just want to worship. And then, you know, a song. Listen to me. You know, they didn't have, they didn't have how many of you know they didn't have Maranatha in those days? But they had, they, had, they had the psalms. And so they went about singing the psalms. They actually did. They sang these. There's a, that's what they are. They're songs. And they, they went about speaking to each other, encouraging each other with these things. Hey, well, praise the Lord. Bless the Lord at all times. My, his praise shall be continued. Everything. They just continued to talk to one another, speaking these things to each other, putting the Holy Spirit in each other. And that's what we ought to be God's people about. Amen. Manifestation of the Spirit comes when we're speaking blessings and joy and, 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 and scriptural blessings on people. Amen. That's what the Spirit is doing here. He's speaking to people, and he wants to use you to speak into others, amen? Your, your co-workers and your neighbors, your classmates. Oh, God wants to, he wants to touch each one of them. Do the same thing. As they see you rejoicing, as they see you and enjoying the peace and the, 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 the presence of the Spirit, the, the calmness of the Spirit in your life, as they see you uh, standing firm in the midst of chaos, as they see you not falling apart because COVID-19 is everywhere, they're going to say, what is that? How, come, how can you be that calm? How can you be this, this? How can you not be upset? And you say, well, the Holy Ghost got this. All I know is I'm trusting the Lord. Amen. I'm worshiping him. Amen. So there's the first part. 
There's the spirit of, there's the spirit of appreciation. There's that, that, that speaking to one another. And then there's, look at the second, verse 20. It says, giving thanks for all things. Giving thanks. You know, giving, are, are you thankful? You know, you know how I know if you're in the spirit or not? Are you thankful this morning? Are you thankful? You see, because I'm just thankful for everything God does. I'm thankful my kids uh, are, are here this morning. My kids are, are healthy. I'm thankful for every one of you that are here this morning. I'm thankful for Micah's kids being here this morning. I'm thankful for Sister Yvonne back there. I'm thankful for, for my house. I'm thankful for my bills. I'm thankful for my dog this morning, amen? I'm thankful for my, my foot that hurts right now. I'm thankful for my shoulder, amen, that still got some pain. But you know what? Why? Because I'm alive because God is working in me, amen? I'm thankful. And if you're hopeful of the Holy Spirit, you ought to be thankful. Amen? It ought to be a thing of thanks on our lips. Every day we ought to be going about God's business. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm thankful. Amen? How do you know you're operating in the Spirit? I'm thankful. And then the third thing is, look, submitting. So, uh oh, here we go. Nobody likes to submit. Everybody wants to be in charge. Well, you know, I got to get my way. You know, that's how you know somebody's not in the spirit. Well, in my opinion, yes, you ain't in the spirit. Well, I feel like you ain't in the spirit either. Yeah. How do you know? Look at verse 21. And he says this, submitting to one another in the fear of God. Look at verse 22. Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. 23. For the husband's the head of the wife is also Christ the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Therefore, just as the church is subject to Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands and everything. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her, that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word, that he might present her to himself, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy and without blemish. So husbands ought to love their own wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself, for no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, just as the Lord does his church. You see, submission, one to another, submitting one to another. Husbands, wives, submitting to each other. Wives, submitting. The, uh, on today's society, we don't want to do that. My pride says, no, no, I don't have to submit to you. I get my way. This is mine, my, my choice. That's not God's way. That's not the Holy Spirit way. The Holy Spirit says, she comes to me and she says, okay, husband, what do you want to do? But you know what I do? I need to be, I love my wife so much, honey, what would you like to do? You know, and we ought to work together. See, we work that as a team. And that's what he's talking about here. And then he goes on, to he goes into chapter 6, talks about kids obeying their parents, parents not, not being overbearing on their kids. There's a way that we're supposed to walk in the spirit with our kids, amen, that kids are supposed to walk with their parents, a way that we work with our employers. He talks about the slaves and the, the free, how that, that if, you're, if, you're, you're, if you're a slave, that, that you should be a, a spirit-filled slave that you're supposed to work like you're working for the Lord, amen, because you are working for the Lord, amen. That's how we, we work. Everything we do, we do as unto the Lord. That's what the spirit-filled life is all about, speaking, giving, submitting. Those three marks, a manifestation of the Spirit. All right, so I'm going to get to close this up now, and I'm trying to wrap this up and bring it home somewhat. The story's told about a little boy who was flying a kite. It was a windy day, and the kite kept going higher and higher and higher. And finally it got so high that it was out of sight. A man passed by and saw, uh, saw the, the little boy holding onto the string, and the man could see, not see the kite, and he asked the boy, how do you even know you have a kite up there? And the boy replied, because I can feel it because I can feel it. We can't see the Holy Spirit, but you can feel him. Amen? You feel him this morning, don't you? All right. Now, my closing is an illustration. This is Luke, or you. Inside, all that, what's inside this glass? You know, something's in there. Air. 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 That's what's in us. A bunch of hot air. A bunch of air. How do I get the air out of this? I got to fill it up with something. Amen? The living water. I can't take out a little bit of air, hopefully. A little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit here, a little bit there. But that's how we are with, with
with sin in our lives. We're, 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 we're working on this. Yeah, go ahead. I'll, I'll pray for this. Yeah. I want, I want to say this because, you know, we try to take sin out of our lives a little bit at a time. I'm trying to, I'm trying to get right over here, Lord. I'm trying not to hate so much. I'm trying to be a little nicer, a little kinder, a little gentler. It doesn't work like that. We'll, we'll never get clean like that. We'll never be full like that. But what we need to do is do just what God wants to do this morning. He wants to take you, and he wants to take that cup, and he wants to fill it up so that you're full to the brim, overflowing, full to the brim of living water so that you can pour this out on a dying world. Because there's a dying world out there. There are people out there right now that are going to hell this morning because they don't know Jesus, but we do. There are people out there that have never been loved, but we have, and we know how to love. There are people out there that have never known how to trust, but we can show them that God can be trusted. We can show them that the living water this morning. The Holy Spirit wants to fill you up. Will you let him? Let's drink of the cup. I needed that. Praise God. Let's stand. I don't want to be just an ordinary pastor, Christian, teacher of the Word of God. I don't want to just scrape into heaven. I want to blast it wide open. I want to see God's kingdom blow up out here. I want to see revival come to San Diego. I believe this upper room right here is going to be key to San Diego's revival right now. I believe that God is going to begin to pour out His Holy Ghost through this place on people everywhere in this city everywhere in this city and it's going to be a fire just like Azusa Street was and Pastor Todd you remember how it was Pastor Keenan but we need to see miracles we need to see power we need to see the Holy Ghost come down we need people delivered set free and healed and that only happens when we're full of the Holy Spirit may God fill us up today Father I praise you and thank you this morning that you're filling us this morning that our cups are running over right now. Pour into us the living water this morning, God. Refrive us, refresh us, restore us, we pray, God. Whatever needs to be flushed out of us, flush it out, God. Oh, God, and fill us up with that new spirit, that living spirit, the life-giving spirit. God, I pray right now that you will take what the Holy Spirit has done in us this morning and you will multiply it, increase it, and use it to change this city, change our, our homes, change our hearts, change our neighbors, change our co-workers, change, Lord God, everything that we come in contact with as a result of being your vessel. I pray this morning, Lord, that you will send down fire, fire to this morning to burn away sin, to change us, to deliver us, to empower us, and to hold us up in the victory. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. And the Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. And the Lord cause his face to shine upon you, be gracious to you, lift up his countenance on you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, I bless each one of you. Let's go have a great week in Jesus. God bless you.